down. Um, the right one in front. One second. There we go. And bingo. Public comments. So, candidate introductions. Uh, I will have the floor open right now for anyone who would like uh, new members to uh, introduce themselves. Uh, so, T, this would be the perfect opportunity right now to go for it. Uh, yeah, I guess I can start off. Um, as the center, um, as our president has mentioned, my name is T. Um, I am in my second semester here at MATC. Uh, it's my first semester um, in Madison. Um, my programming is liberal arts transfer for pre-med. Um, my, my programming is going to be toxicology over at UW-Madison, uh, granted approval to transfer. Um, and the major reasons why I wanted to join the Student Senate was because there's a lot of things that I really want to see uh, get going at MITC for the student population. Um, I myself happen to be an LGBTQ member and I want to see a lot more uh, visibility ultimately all across the board when it comes to um, student identities of all sorts on campus um, and more education for these topics within that community. Uh, whether or not, you know, we can find a way to improve coursework, offer more courses, or just general more support uh, extracurricularly, like with our GSA, that's kind of trying to get on its feet in the school, but uh, it's not going the greatest because everyone's schedule is kind of conflicting right now. Um, other things that I did want to get established within the school is a activism group which I've already spoke to Seth about uh, because I came in uh, wanting to do a table for fundraising for humanitarian causes for the invasion of Ukraine. However, that was not something I could do so easily, especially independently because there was no proper protocol or channeling for this. No responding staff member um, in front of the MATC faculty that could be the supervisor of this uh, activity of mine. So I, I think that is something that would benefit not only our students' general well-being to be able to be uh, active in certain causes that they genuinely believe in, but I think that would be better for not just our school, but Madison as a city as a whole. Uh, it would bring a lot of attention to causes, whether or not they're local, and get more support for them, and hopefully see a lot more social engagement within students when it comes to these uh, social issues of all sorts, even local politics, like what's going on currently at the Capitol. These are things that this group could more actively discuss. And, you know, if the group were wanting to launch a campaign to, you know, make a movement speaking out against the way that our local government is moving forward, that we oppose as a student body, we could do so. Uh, just general student community kind of activism is what I really would like to focus on that with that one. Um, and I would say that the best way for me to do it is very hands-on with starting it, getting that involved, getting, getting it out there in terms of the actual concept of it, but also continually pushing for it and dig digging up those channels that I would need, uh, getting all the organization done that I would need to do that. Um, and not just for my own, I've also spoken to other students around campus last week, um, more or less whoever came into Troax. Um, I had <clears throat> this wonderful student named Rosalie um, talk to me about quite a bit of 
quite a bit of things that she would like to see change as well for MATC. Um, a lot of it has to do for uh, returning adult students, uh, particularly those in my cases that are married or leaving the marriage uh, or other students like her who are married with kids, um, generally working parents as well, and how we can, as a school, help them return to school and all across, you know, not just Troex, but all our campuses, better engagement with online schooling. So that way we can see people have that flexibility to return to school and then hopefully engage on campus and become a more active student. Um, and the other student that I had spoken with, uh, her name escapes me right now. She wanted to see more intersectionality as well at the school. Uh, she wants to go forward with getting a established group for uh, feminism rights and um, general activism there and, and campus education. So she's very interested in what I'm looking forward to with establishing these activism groups um, and these the general process that I would be able to help her with when it comes to establishing these groups. So these are the main focuses of mine. Um, yes, do you have a question? Uh, Katrina? I was gonna wait until you were finished, but then I have some suggestions for you and I, because I know a lot of people who are actually interested in a lot of the things that you're talking about, and there are, are even instructors who are um, involved, engaged in stuff like that. So I wasn't trying to interrupt you, so I do apologize. No, I just was trying to put my hand up before I forgot. <laughs> I understand. I have ADHD. I will forget really easily. That's why I use a lot of filler words is because I, uh, unfortunately, I'm unmedicated, so my brain can uh, derails a lot. Tea? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to unfortunately have to cut you off here. I, I love the enthusiasm I, and we want that spirit, um, but we do have uh, the budget presentation we have got to get to. So uh, and we want to make sure that the uh, other members also get a chance to introduce themselves. So just okay. save that for save the enthusiasm for a little bit later down the road here. Um, but uh, I, we, we love it though. So, all right. So all right. Cool, cool. Uh, Wilfred, did, uh, I know you uh, kind of gave it a little bit of an introduction yesterday, uh, last meeting, but did you want to maybe say anything else? Check in with everybody. Say like my name again, short introduction, you mean? Yeah, yes, yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Find oh, okay. Thing out there. So my name is Wilfried Tabsuba from Burkina Faso. This is my second semester here at Madison College. I'm in a liberal art transfer engineering program. I wanted to join the Senate this semester, like see what they're doing, but I have a scheduled conflict. That's why I wasn't able to attend to the meeting. But hopefully next fall, I apply to join the student Senate in order to help students get more involved on campus. I've been working at the same center, interacting with students, helping them with their homework, helping them with 2D printing as well. Perfect. About me, yeah. All right. So I think I'm going to cut that off right there for the uh, can introductions. Uh, and that, great, everyone. All right. So then moving on down, the SAB budget presentation. It will then allow Kylie and Jack to be able to be up front. You are. Okay, it looks great. Okay. All right, so for those, of you, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jack Shockey. I am the Student Senate Representative on the Student Activities Board, um, and I'm here with Kylie, who I'll let introduce herself. Hi, my name is Kylie Phillips. I am a Student Representative from UCG Organization on the SAB Board. 
I also assist under the uh, Dr. Casper as a SAC co-chair representing SAP. And as we present the budget here today, we're also supported by uh, Dr. Tim Casper, Executive Vice President of Student Affairs and Institutional Effectiveness. He also co-chairs the Student Activities Board. Uh, we're also joined by Ben Monti, the Budget Director, and Renee Alfano, the Director of Student Life. Student Activities Board is made up of 10 student organizations that are charged with making decisions about the allocation of the student activity fee and commuter services fee. The 10 organizations are Athletics, Executive Leadership Team, Performing Arts Leadership, Phi Theta Kappa, Program and Activities Council, Student Life, Student Media, Student Senate, United Common Ground, and the Volunteer Center. Each organization has a representative and an alternate representative who participate in meetings to make decisions about the fees and activity fund. We are here today to ask for the Student Senate to approve the Student Activities Fee Budget for 2022-2023. After your approval, it will, be, it will go to the College President and District Board for final approval along with the rest of the College Budget. This handout, which was emailed to you ahead of time, gives a high-level picture of the budget that the Student Activities Board approved last week. It outlines spending for the revenue generated by the Student Activity Fee and Community Services Fee. We will be walking you through each section of the handout to explain what is being requested. We know you can't really read it on this screen, but we will zoom into the sections as we explain. As we dive into each section, please feel free to stop us and ask for questions. At the top of the handout, you can see the expected starting balance to be almost $1.3 million, and the, and the student activity fees are expected to be, to be an additional $1,378,000. This document also projects out the starting balance and revenues for the next three years. A portion of the Student Activity Fund supports the salary and benefits for advisors in student life and coaches in athletics. This amount for 2022-2023 is $672,828. The College General Fund also contributes to the salary and benefits for those employees. So in the middle of the budget document, as you can see here, the total budget request is broken down by organization. And the organization budgets are projected out for three years with some groups anticipating increased requests. On the far right, you can see the percentage change from the amount allocated this year to the amount requested for next year. And all the groups combined requests uh, equate to about $1.5 million. Uh, Most organizations requesting increased um, and there are some common trends to explain many of these increases. So first, Student Life conducted a stipend review to determine if stipends were equitable across organizations and enough to compete with the many involvement and work opportunities that students have to choose from. And this led to significant increases for groups with many student leaders like Student Senate um, and increases across the board. Another increase is related to the higher cost of travel and groups wanting to resume traveling, which hasn't been happening um, that much or at all in the past two years, depending on the organization. And the students in the organization who created these budgets faced a unique challenge of not knowing what uh, normal spending looked like and making educated guesses uh, about what activity costs will look like in the next year. So the grand total student activities fee request is just over $2.2 million, which includes the previously mentioned uh, employee salaries and all the student organizations budget requests. As you can see here, if all groups spend all the requested money for the next three years, there'll be a slight deficit. It's about $12 by 2025. Um, however, this is very unlikely to happen. As you saw in the historical spending document that was shared with you all via email, 
uh, groups have spent about 56 to 98 percent of their budget depending on the year. And all the money that is not spent during the fiscal year will return to the student activities fund and the reserves to be used in the future. Uh, in the light green box, you can see the um, fee that will be assessed to students in liberal arts transfer course and program courses next year and in the following two years. The student activities fee is charged at a percentage of the tuition, so the fee is higher for liberal arts transfer courses because the tuition is higher, uh, because the tuition is higher for those courses. And the student activities fee for 2022 and 2023 has been reduced for six, uh, from 6.5 of tuition to 4.5 of tuition for 2022 through 2023 only. And that was due to a huge balance accumulating in our reserves or our retained earnings. And the Student Activities Board has a reserves policy, which dictates uh, that the amount of the reserves can only be uh, between 7 and 15 percent of the overall student activities fund. And that reserve uh, is expected to hit about 60 percent uh, at the end of this year. So we took steps to spend down that reserves fund. And it was a difficult decision, but uh, ultimately, Reducing that um, percentage will save students next year and will help um, and spending down the reserves uh, will help us be in line with SAB policy. And the reserves fund, it became so large due to drastically decreased spending, spending during COVID uh, and the pandemic reduced spending for three fiscal years now uh, due to decreased activity on campus, less interest in paid student internship roles, uh, excuse me, leadership roles and significantly less travel. And then the last thing I want to make note of is at the bottom of the budget document, uh, you can see there's a budget for the bus pass program, regional campuses, and health clinic. Uh, this is just for informational purposes. Uh, within the Student Activities Board, we make decisions about these funds, um, but we're not looking for Senate approval on those expenses. Um, so that concludes what we have, um, but we're happy to take any questions. I can share the full document in case someone wanted me to zoom in on any particular part of it. I have one simple question. Yes, I'm not sure who... Oh, it's me, T. Um, I just wanted to know about where we can access the documents. Where were they sent? Um, so they, I believe they're sent to student senate members. Um, as student senate is the organization, um, their members vote on approving the budget. Um, so I believe this was shared with them earlier. Uh, I'm not sure as far as beyond that um, where or how or if uh, it's able to be accessed. Okay. I am happy to share it with you. And just for your information, you won't be able to vote on this um, as you are not yet a senator. Hopefully will be afternoon tomorrow. Um, but we'll, um, you're welcome to ask questions. Absolutely. Yeah, I just would like to keep a general knowledge about these things, even as a non-senator student. I can't see sure. any, I can't yeah. see any, I can call them out. Senator Yame, I believe. Yeah, a quick question about the budget on childcare. And uh, is it narrowed down to the actual number of people that is that are, are applying for that program? Or because it, the amount seems to be very small. And, yeah, so I believe that's. Um, only a portion of the total child care budget uh, that comes directly from SAB and then other college uh, funding contributes to that. Um, so that's a set standard amount, um, I believe, that remains the same. Okay. And the other question that, that I have is, uh, if, I don't know whether you, you may have knowledge about it or not, but uh, what are the criteria? for this child care program, for someone to get his child admitted to this, his or her child admitted to this program as a uh, student parent, as a parent attending college. Because it's like, I met a student that, a student that told me that uh, he, 
he registered he wanted to register his child so that he would be able to attend in person in person classes and he had only one day on the schedule to to for the whole week to be for every week and eventually he was torn down because he had only one day to to bring his child in this in the school because that's the only in person classes are so what are the criteria for someone to get into this kind of program because it, I had a concern from a student. Renee raised her hand. I believe okay. she has an answer. Renee, did you have, did you want to answer that one, Renee? Sure. Okay. Um. So part of the is to do with the parent to teacher ratio. Um, there can only be, by policy, a certain number of children per teacher, and um, and that varies depending on the age of the students. And so students are given first priority. Well, let me take that back. Student parents who are already there have first priority um, based on their schedule, and then it's opened up to more students. And so what it sounds Sounds like to me is that um, based on the student to teacher ratio, there were probably certain days that it was already filled. Um, and that's why it was only, uh, they were only able to um, assist that student one day a week. But I would encourage them to continue because they don't, you know, to apply again because. Once a student is, in, uh, is six years old, they no longer qualify. Um, you know, they go to, to uh, public school or private school, but this particular center um, only goes up to six years old. So it changes every year, every semester, actually. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, T. Uh, kind of springboarding off of that, seeing as how um, on campus childcare is only limited at current to people or to children under six. I know some other tech colleges around the state have um, started helping out uh, pre COVID actually with childcare costs at um, like daycares and such. Is there such uh, programming that parents? might be able to take advantage of. I, I do not know um, off the top of my head. I'm not sure if... Renee, do you have anything that you can help shed light on that question? Sure, um, and Dr. Casper might be able to do, um, to add to this. It's been a little while since I've been in that that area, but from what I understand, they continue to apply for grants to lower the costs for students, um, you know, who utilize the child care center. And so once those grants are awarded, um, they also accept donations and, you know, that go through the foundation that again, uh, lowers the cost for students. And they also help the student apply for, um, if they qualify for county, in state assistance. Um, that is uh, these assistances available to these uh, parents that have children slightly older than the current limit for the age. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Did Did you want to share more about some of the newer yeah. Yeah. efforts? Yeah. So I think. Uh, I hope I'm, yeah, there's a lot of cameras in this room and I might be sick, so my apologies. Um, the, the limitations presently are to six years of age, but more broadly speaking, the college is well aware that, that child care is a need for many of our students, not just here at our Truex campus, but at our South campus in Madison, as well as our regional campuses. And our Vice President for Administrative Services, where the child care center um, resides within her portfolio of responsibilities, has been working um, with community partners with grants that we've received from the state of Wisconsin to try and develop additional capacity 
to support those parents who have children who have child care needs because we do understand that that hinders the ability for some students who wish to participate um, at Madison College and either want to or need to, depending on the program, participate in their learning experiences in person. Um, understanding and finding a way to provide more child care services is something that we're presently working on. I'm not the expert on that, but it might be an idea for a future um, update from Sylvia Ramirez uh, to the Senate um, so she can talk about in more detail with um, some of the other partners here at the college who are working on that. That kind of give a good answer to you? Yes, it did. Um, I, it, it's one of those things that I'm going to have to just continually follow up for for um, any significant uh, changes on that. But as of now, um, that sounds like everything is in the positive direction. So I'm content. Well, cool. Um, I think that it doesn't look like there are any more comments. Uh, and we can probably go ahead and proceed right. to the next step here. Uh, let's all give both of these uh, amazing SAB reps uh, a hand on this presentation. It was very great. Um, so, a um, couple things I want to make sure, because um, I'm going to be looking for a motion to approve or pass it, this budget back to SAB not to make modifications to the budget. You're either taking it as it is or you're passing it back. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is only voting members. Um, so with that said, I see two hands up currently right now. Um, Senator Willis. I move to approve the um, budget as is. Okay, and just to clarify for the, the, the the recording the SAB budget uh, for the fiscal year 2022-2023, correct? Precisely. All right, so that motion's been made. Do we have a second? And I see VP LaBella, is this a second? Yes. All right, so only voting members, uh, all those in favor, please use the hand raising feature right now to approve the budget for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023, the SAB budget. And we got, I see one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you can put your hands down and just, uh, just go through the whole motions here. All those opposed, you can uh, put your hands up now. All right. And you can put your hands down. And then any abstentions, you can put your hands up now. All right, well, the, uh, there are five in favor. So uh, congratulations, everyone. We have approved the SAB budget for the next year. So let's all give ourselves a hand. Uh, yeah, success, victory, woo, yeah. All right, so, yeah. Uh, with that Are said, you stay or leave, uh, up to you. <laughs> yeah, you have that opportunity right now. Uh, you, I'm just going to continue on down. You can just step up if you want to, but uh, no worries, all right? <laughs> um, all right, so uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep on moving. Uh, now with reports of officers, advisors, and standing committees, executive council, and president's report, um, uh, I had my... I had the district court report uh, meeting yesterday and gave Senate, the Senate report and the good news of the uh, outstanding student organization that we've been uh, selected for for this, uh, this year. Uh, they were thrilled about that. So that's some great news, everyone. Good job. Um, besides that, um, tomorrow, yes, uh, usual 10 a.m. spot. Uh, I think uh, we'll be going... Uh, we have, I think we'll be looking over one of the bills that I had put together for food. Um, and it's probably going to go along with just sculpting for the agenda. Um, but besides that, uh, it's been a very busy week with the uh, it was vote, voting, student voting, tabling. I've been, it's been a very busy week, but a very good week and a, a fulfilling week. So that's going to conclude my report. Um, I'm going to move on down to admin and finance committee. VP Shockey. 
Yeah, we, the finance committee is continuing to work with the executive leadership team to kind of structure uh, the process we use to review club funding requests. Um, no new requests have came in yet, um, but we kind of want to have a structured way of processing these requests. Uh, that's the most efficient way. Um, so that's what we've been working on, and that concludes my report. Thank you, VP Shockey. Uh Moving on down, uh, we've got the Legislative Affairs Committee currently vacant. Um, Team Development Committee, VP Linder, your report. Oh, probably type something in. Right. Student Success Awards, April 20th at 11 o'clock. Let Advisor Rome know if you can be there. Woo! That's what, uh, that's what VP Linder said, I swear by it. Um, and that, yep, yeah, and that ends the report. So uh, thank you, VP Linder, that was amazing. Um, moving on down, Park Relations Committee, VP LaBella, your report. No report. All right, thank you very much. And then the Senate Advisor Report with Advisor Rome. Yeah, so let me know if you're going to attend the Student Success Awards Banquet. I would like to get us RSVP'd as soon as possible. Um, currently, I have Buya, Ella, Lisa, Sean, and Jack attending with me uh, on behalf of Senate. If anyone else also wants to uh, attend live in person, let me know. Um, otherwise, you are more than welcome to watch the uh, live stream. I'll make sure everyone has the link for that. Um, stipend rubrics, uh, start working on those. Those will be due as I sent out yesterday, uh, April 21st. Uh, we do that to make sure that there is enough time to have conversations and uh, process everything um, for a pay period that happens before the end of the semester. Um, so if you are unsure of what that means, um, I, I will probably just check in with our newer senators um, about that. Um, but the rest of you have done it many times before. So um, feel free to reach out if you have questions. Otherwise, email those to me by the 21st. Um, elections close at noon tomorrow. No surprise. Um, for those of you who are candidates on the ballot, um, I will be reaching out as soon as possible um, to let you know. You will have until Tuesday at noon to accept or decline your positions. Um, so keep an eye out on your email and uh, make sure that if you um, are elected uh, that you let me know you're, you want to Except the seat, because um, that's an important piece. Um, that is everything I have, unless there are questions. Don't see any questions. Um, yes, totally fine if you come a little late. Oh, sorry, that was a private message. So the person who asked that question, totally fine if you come a little bit late to the Student Success Award. Uh, Sam Germain? Yeah, uh, I have a question for you, uh, I have an advisor uh, with regards to, because the last time I asked about the, the time sitting, um, I'm seeing the, that form that you sent us. So are we going to be feeling, because I'm kind of, conf I'm still confused about the hours because the last time the, the internet was glitching, I don't know, it's due to teams or what. So do I still continue, I have to be feeling the time seat at the same time feel this form that you send in or yeah so the office hours log is filled out every week um, for the required two hours or more if you do more and then the stipend rubric um, which I will connect with you and Senator Lynn um, more directly to kind of explain it um, but it is basically you are telling me how you think you did as a student senator um, for the whole semester um, so you're you know we're looking at all of the responsibilities so that includes the office hours um, are you showing up to meetings? Are you participating? Are you logging those office hours? Um, all of the requirements that you um, agreed to when you signed the agreement to serve. Um, so then we take a look at what you have said about your performance, um, make sure that that's accurate, and then assess the um, stipend uh, at, at the level that you've responded, basically. If you meet expectations, you get the full uh, stipend. Um, for those of you who joined partway through the semester, we take off a little bit just because it wasn't the full semester. Um, but I'll communicate with both of you um, a little bit more directly about how to complete that. Yeah, I've not been filling the time seeds because I don't even know where to start from. I'm still confused with that. Am I? Okay. Do I need to be adding the, the general meetings or 
it has to be any activity that I do online with regards to training and all that. Let's set up a time to go through that. I will, I'll send you an email. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And um, he had a, a message, as well, uh, a comment as well about the. I, I would assume as the live stream link would be would be available, at, so anyone could. I, I think work. it's going to be widely available. That's what I was, that's what I was thinking. So. Um, I'm sure it will be posted in Wolfpack Connect, um, but I'll I'll email it out to everybody as well. And T, your hands, your hand, your hand is up. Yeah, if we're gonna just kind of air it out. Um. I also would like to know if the live stream will be recorded for uh, viewing later a date. It will. I, I, I remember well, by that, okay. I do I know. Personally. Uh, BP Lindert might be able to uh, confirm that too. Oh, yeah. Good. She is on the committee. Okay. Yeah, you just type it out. I'll speak to the, speak it out. Mm -hmm. No, I don't ever. Yeah, being slightly quiet here, so we're at uh, BP Linder can concentrate. Uh, I always really like to joke around. Uh, gee, uh, I'm not sure either. I can touch base with Candace and let you know. Um, I'm pretty sure it did because it said uh, when the person or the organization or whomever gets so, uh, selected and then uh, CCs the, the uh, it also says there will be um, our recording so they can be watched after the fact. I believe is what it said at the very. Um, but either way, um, I, I yeah I agree with BP Linder and as far as wrong. We're, we're just checking in with uh, Candace just to be on the safe side. But yeah, um, all right, so cool. Uh, moving on down, then uh, reports from, I should ask, is this, is that conclusion report? Yes. All right. Reports uh, from special and select committees. Student activities for BP Shock, do you have anything new going on? <laughs> well, as you all saw, we pretty much finalized our budget, some last minute adjustments, uh, and then approved it for, it was approved by all of you. So that's uh, basically what we did at our, at our meeting, and that concludes my report. All right, the okie dokie uh, racial equity committee is currently vacant. Uh, it's expert affordability committee, uh, President Green and BP Shockey. Uh, I don't know if there's one next week or something. Um, next Monday. Next Monday, yep, there we go. Uh, next meeting is next Monday. Nothing new since then. Uh, so, no report to give. Um, so, that, that's going to conclude that. Um, Public Safety Advisory Committee, Senator Willis, do you have a report? No report. Thank you very much. And then moving on down to reports from regional and metro campuses. Leedsburg is currently vacant. Watertown is currently vacant. Uh, Portage is currently vacant. Uh, Fort Atkinson is currently vacant. And then Goodman South, uh, Senator Zhang. Uh, Senator Zhang, I don't think is no longer with us in the meeting. So uh, <clears throat> we'll get a report at later and make sure it's reflected in the minutes uh, for next week. Um, so cool, cool, cool. Moving on down, reports from College Assembly and Chair Governance Councils. Uh, College Assembly, I've been substituting in this uh, position for the rest of this uh, term. Uh, there's a College Assembly meeting next Wednesday. So uh, stay tuned for next Thursday when I give the uh, uh, the feedback or what the load on what happened. Um, so that concludes that. Academic Council, uh, well, Senator Jane was the uh, representative for that. So if she's not here any longer, then same thing's going to apply for uh, the Academic Council report. We'll just make sure we get it and uh, put it in the minutes for next week. Uh, Diversity and Community Relations Council is currently vacant. Uh, facilities Planning and Investment Council. Senator Willis, do you have a report for us? I do have a report. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon my granddaughter. She's trying to report too. Um, we met yesterday and we 
basically broke into breakout groups of two members each and compiled the data collected at all campuses the week of March 11th, where we collected student feedback, both in person and online. We received over 200 responses. The feedback was gathered by sticky notes, paper surveys, and an online survey. We are currently entering the responses into SurveyMonkey and WordCloud. Our goal is to present the results of our student feedback assessments to Student Senate and to College Assembly before the end of spring semester. At our next FPIC meeting to be held on April 20th, we will be assigning tasks to various members of FPIC as far as who's going to present um, during the presentations to Student Senate and College Assembly. Um, this pertains to Student Senate and the student body because FPIC reached out to all students on all campuses to collect their feedback on our current and desired facility uses that students would like to see. We accomplished collecting student feedback in person and online. Additionally, we'll be compiling the data that reflect the student's interest. And our next steps are to finalize entering data points into Word Cloud to flesh out things and record repetition of things by multiple respondents, develop a presentation to present to Student Senate and College Assembly, finalize members who will assist with the presentation, um, assignments for each location, and I will update Student Senate again after our April 20th meeting with our status of when we will schedule our presentation. That concludes our report. All right, thank you, Sarah Willis. Uh, moving on down then, Finance Council is currently vacant. Information Technology Council. Sarah Zebel, do you have a report for us? Report. All right. Thank you very much. Institutional Effectiveness Counselor, VP Shockey, do you have a report? Yeah, we uh, saw a presentation. I believe it was conducted by Achieving the Dream. Is that correct? Um, it was conducted by Achieving the Dream and asked uh, faculty and administrators at the college a series of questions uh, that kind of assesses the, the capacity of the college. Uh, it was on a four-point scale. Um, it's asking questions about um, how we do things, how effective certain modes of um, certain means of doing things here at the college, I guess, is, would be the best way to categorize it. That's kind of broad, but um, and so we saw that presentation and are going to possibly use some of the information as we work on our uh, issue statement um, moving forward. So that's kind of where our what we, what we did at our meeting, uh, and that includes my report. All right, thank you very much. Uh, since I know that the typing is going to have to happen, I'm just going to go to student affairs right now to let you have a second to type, VP Linger, to kind of make, you know, can, you know, use our time wisely. Uh, so, VP LaBella, do you have a report for student affairs? I do not. We meet next Friday. All right. And, uh, you know, of all the good things we're trying to do there for you, VP Linger, you had no report anyway. So, I thought, woo! Okie dokie, no report there for that. All right, cool, cool, cool. That finishes reports from College Assembly and Shared Governance Councils. So, moving on down, unfinished business. We do not have any unfinished business. Uh, not business housekeeping items. Uh, it says none, so uh, I'm going to go with that. Um, announcements. Uh, like Advisor Rome said, those second rubrics, April 21st, please. Uh, officers do Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Please make sure you're filling those out and we can hold on strong to the very end. Uh, send our reports to Senate Communications Coordinator, Sarah Zebel. Uh, check your outlook, your teams, uh, messages back and forth between each other, between me, Advice Rome, E-Team, etc. You know the drill. Um, but with that said, I see a hand up from the one and only, Senator Willis. I move to adjourn. All right, so a motion's been made to adjourn tonight's meeting, uh, and I see another hand up from Sarah Zebel. Is this a second? Sir. All right, all those in favor, please use the hand raising feature now, and keep those hands up. And of course, that is majority right there. So we are adjourned officially at 5.22 p.m. April the 7th, 2022.
Good job, everyone, on that budget. Good questions. Um, and uh, yay. Good, happy weekend. And uh, we, we did good this week, everyone.